Here we have an older two-man boat. It's a fiberglass boat and we're going to do a fiberglass repair job on a little damage to the deck here. And as you can see, it's broken through to the fiberglass. This is from sitting on racks that are not cushioned enough. And you'll notice that the glass itself is actually broken in there. If this were just a superficial repair, you could do a just a gel coat over the top, but since the glass is broken, that's a structural problem and we're going to repair the fiberglass itself. These are the materials we'll be using. Notice that there's uh, fiberglass cloth, which we'll be using. The Sun Cure or UV Cure resin called um, Solar Res. I have a tube of Solar Res here. This stuff is thick like toothpaste. It has micro tubules and little pieces of filaments in it. It does give it a little bit of strength, but it's not strong enough to do a structural repair. If you're just patching a little spot that leaks or something and the fiberglass is not broken, you could use that. But I found it to be a little um, inflexible and it, it will break pretty readily, so a little brittle. So I don't use it when I know there, there's a potential for flexing. Be using a couple of cups here to uh, put the resins in. I like to use credit cards to spread the resin out. There are people who suggest you can use clear plastic and cover it and get a nice smooth surface. I have had some success with that if the area is fairly small and fairly flat, but if it goes over a curved surface, it tends to wrinkle up. And uh, people sometimes suggest using saran wrap, but I've never had it work successfully. It turns out to be uh, always wrinkly. Uh, I'll be using uh, flexible sanding blocks. I have a solid sanding block if I need it for the flat surface. We'll be using tape, several grits of sandpaper, acetone for cleaning up and cleaning the surface ahead of time, a rubber glove because acetone is a hazardous material. Then I'll be using my buffing wheel on a drill and some polishing compound. And of course some rags are always handy. We'll start by cleaning the surface of the gel coat. So first we'll be cleaning with acetone. You want to use a little bit. You don't want to get the fiberglass underneath wet. Clean the whole area. You don't want it to soak into the glass itself. And I take a piece of paper and I'm going to tape it to the hole below here. I'm using an envelope which works pretty well but you can do anything and I have this on a slope. I'm going to sand this around this area and catch some of this red material in the envelope. I'm going to try and reuse that when I put the final coat on to give it the same color as the hole itself. You can get kits that mix colors to actually match uh, they're relatively expensive, around $40 to $50 for the little kit. That does work, but since I'm going to glass this anyway, and I'm going to be sanding this anyway, I'm just going to try and catch the red uh, gel coat. I'm going to start off with 50 grit sandpaper. It's pretty rough, but I need to get down to the glass itself. enough. So as you can see I've cut two small pieces of fiberglass cloth. One that will fit in this deepest section right there and then a second one to cover that up. So first I'm going to take my resin and pour it into this little cup and I'm going to just dab a little bit on the end and sort of soak this area. Get it to penetrate into the old fiberglass underneath there. I'm going to take the smallest piece and put it in the deepest hole. And then I'm going to make sure that gets soaked thoroughly with the resin. I'll push it into place, the deep spot. Then I'm going to put the last piece over the top of the entire area. And I'm going to pat that down with more resin. I probably should be wearing rubber gloves at this point. But too late now. 
Try and make sure you get all the bubbles out of the res out of the uh, resin that's under the cloth. And at this point, if you can see any edges sticking up, try and make them lay down. I'll save you a little work on the end. Okay, that's good. If this was a deeper scar, I would do uh, three layers of cloth. Two is probably enough in this case. Now we're going to take it outside. This stuff sets in about six minutes in full sun. In cloudy conditions like today, I'd give it 10 minutes. It's perfectly dry now. It's a little rough around the edges. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper with my hard sanding block because this is a flat surface and this is a flat surface. I'm going to try and get rid of these ridges on each side. You don't want to sand too much, just get rid of the bumps and actually you can feel them better with your fingers than you can see them. That's actually pretty good right there. Now we'll take it back inside and put some more resin on it. So now I'm just going to try and build up a little bit more resin in the depression here. Fill that in a bit. And maybe brush a smooth finish. Take my brush with just a little bit of acetone, very, very small amount. I'm going to brush around the edges to kind of smooth out the edge. It uh, helps to keep from having a, a seam or an edge to sand away. Just a very thin amount. If you put too much acetone on it, the resin won't set. But if you brush out that edge, it helps to make a smoother transition. Okay, back outside. That's any hard, just a very light touch. Okay. Some of these little dips in here show me how much weight I want to make sure I get that very well sanded out. This part, okay, that'll be alright. So here I have a cup with a small amount of resin in the bottom and I'm going to take the powder from the sanding from the envelope we had and I'm going to pour some of it in there, not quite all. I see a couple of big chunks going down there. In case I need a little bit more later I'll save the rest. Stir that in with my brush and hopefully it'll be somewhat red color. And I'm going to try and brush that on the areas that don't have red on them. This area that was worn here. Now the red should match exactly, however, it's going to be sort of clear red. It's not going to be quite as dense a red color as the actual gel coat. You'll be able to see through it a little bit. But it will match in color, at least fairly closely. Later. Take it outside to dry. Just very lightly. <sighs> Stuff cuts pretty quickly. <sighs> Get wet. wet sandpaper. And this is uh, just polishing the surface before we actually use the buffer. Polishing compound and uh, my buffing wheel on my on my drill. Just going to take the corner of my buffing wheel and get a little bit on there. About like that. Put it on there and start buffing. That's pretty shiny. Looks good. All done.